Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale, and in this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I want to share with you my updated pasta with vodka sauce. It is so good. I've been making it with peas and sausage, which is what I'm going to share with you today, and it is divine. <laughs> I cannot wait to share this recipe with you because it's really easy and simple, but the combination of the vodka sauce with the spicy sausage, the sweet peas, it's heaven in your mouth, okay? Delicious. I've got my little um, shallow Dutch oven here, which I love so much, with some olive oil. And I'm preheating that over about medium heat, and to it, I'm going to add some sausage. I have a couple different kinds of sausage here, um, uh, but this is beef sausage and pork sausage, but you know what? Any sausage that you like will do. Uh, and a quick tip to slicing sausage is pop it in the freezer for like 15 minutes. You can see it makes it a lot, a lot easier to slice. I like this combination because it's got the pork sausage has a little bit more heat and a little bit more fat. The beef sausage is just delicious and they were a gift from a friend, so I like that. Okay, well you're also going to need onion, garlic, olive oil, a little vodka. If you do not want to use vodka, do not use vodka. This, this sauce is delicious without, don't feel like you have to add it. But if you want to, there you go. You also need some crushed tomatoes. Now, I prefer to buy whole plum tomatoes and, you know, canned and then just mash them myself and crush them myself because I always feel like when you buy pre-canned crushed tomatoes, it's basically a tomato puree and that's not what I want. So, what I'm going to do, I also have a pot coming to a, with water coming to a boil for the pasta. I'm just going to babysit my sausage until it's pretty much fully cooked through. Then I'll get it out of the pan and I'll show you the next step. Get the sausage out, beautiful, and this will go back in, so it'll continue to cook and render all its flavor. I'm going to add the onion and the garlic to the rendered fat here with a little bit of olive oil, and I'll just assist to see if it needs more oil. It's a tiny bit dry, so I am going to use a little bit more oil. Okay, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'm gonna let these saute nicely. I don't need these to caramelize and cook for a super long time. I just want them to kind of cook down and become a little bit lightly golden brown. And it's gonna be so good. And it already smells delish. They look great. And now the reason why I leave my garlic cloves whole is because later I'm gonna take them out because I want them to lend their flavor, but I don't want it to be too sharp. I'm gonna go ahead and add the vodka now again. Don't add it if you don't want to. Don't stand too close. Um, don't add it if you don't want to. Add wine in its place if you want to. Um, but look what it's doing. It is just lifting all of those little bits that were stuck at the bottom of the pan from the sausage. See that? I'm just gonna cook this long enough to reduce by half. You wanna add about, eh, about a half a cup or so. I'm gonna just that, let that reduce for a little bit. And then we're gonna go ahead and add the tomatoes, a little bit of Italian seasoning with some hot pepper flakes. It's really delicious. Really good. Gonna add the tomatoes. Now, as I said earlier, I like to crush my own tomatoes, and plus, when you get them in here and they start cooking, they'll break down even more. Because I just feel like, you know, store-bought crushed tomatoes are basically tomato puree. And if you know me, then you know, that for the tomato puree, in my opinion, you need to let it cook for a long time. So this is not a sauce that's gonna cook for hours and hours. So crushed tomatoes it is. I'm also gonna go ahead and add my Italian seasoning with the hot pepper flakes. And I'm gonna add my sausage back in. You can use chicken sausage for this. You can use turkey sausage for this. You can use no sausage for this. The point of cooking is Get an idea, get, you know, be, be inspired by this, but use whatever you have. You want to add meatballs, add meatballs. You want to add nothing, add nothing. You want to add some sautéed mushrooms, add that. So, totally up to you. It's already coming up to a bubble. I'm going to go ahead and partially cover this, lower the heat to medium, let it simmer for about 20 minutes. Then, I'll show you the next step. <laughs> that looks fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and add frozen peas. I'm also going to uh, had, add a splash of heavy cream and I'm going to just let this bubble away together for about 10-ish minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and add 
the wa the water. Can I talk today? I'm hungry. I'm gonna go ahead and add the pasta to the boiling water. Once that's cooked, we're gonna add it all together. We're gonna let it do its magical thing. I've already seasoned this with some salt. I already uh, tasted it. So we are in business. Gorgeous, right? Oh yes. Thickened, it's glorious. Add your drained pasta. Oh, this is where the magic happens. Slowly toss everything together. You wanna make sure that your sauce is not watery at this point, and also you need a good amount of parm. And now just, oh, toss it all together until it's nice and coat it in that sauce. Mm. And I like to use this kind of pasta shape for this because I really love it when the sauce kind of like adheres to the pasta and then just sort of hides in the little nooks and crannies of the pasta. It's, you know, it's just, it's delicious. I think this particular shape is called gnocchi shape, but whatever, it is phenomenal. You can see all the sauce kind of like hides underneath, I mean the sides. Take this to the table with a little bit, for, little bit more parm on top, a little fresh basil, and you, my friend, are in business. I'm gonna taste take a little later fall for myself, you know? I've earned it. Add that into my little bowl. Not the salivating. It smells so good. Mmm. Yeah. That's the kind of comfort that I crave halfway during the week. Do you know what I mean? It's perfection on every level. Hot though, very, very hot. It needs a little bit of black pepper, which I will serve at the table. Go to laurainthekitchen.com and get the written recipe. I hope you enjoyed spending time with me, and I will see you next time.